Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Good to see you all. And uh, how are you, Dr. Liz? Wonderful. Thank you. How are you doing? And my partner, my partner, John Coleman, how are you? Uh, we're doing great. Uh, Dr. Liz, uh, St. Patrick's Day, which I consider as an Irishman, one of the holiest days of the year, St. <laughs> Patrick's Day. Um, it just passed. And I have a friend who used to own a bar many years ago. And he would say, another Irishman, he would say that the amateurs come out on St. Patrick's Day. He hated St. Patrick's Day because the amateurs would come out and they'd get drunk and fall down and, and uh, you know, make the rest of us drinkers give the rest of us a bad name. But it's, I think it's true that there, that there, a little bit of alcohol could be good for you. But I'm, my guess is that um, there's a certain way to do uh, healthy drinking if there, if there is such a thing, is there? There definitely is healthier drinking, that's for sure. I agree with your friend. Your friend is right from a health standpoint. It is actually better, and this has been studied, to if, if someone drinks, to drink moderately or less on a regular basis than it is to binge on St. Patrick's Day or other holidays, other occasions. So the regular lower amount of drinking is actually better for us than a binge of really heading towards alcohol intoxication. That's not good. But you know, I think that yeah. John, that, that your friend who owned the bar was really referring to the fact that uh, uh, his regulars knew how to get really drunk, but still stand up as, <laughs> year round. So that's, that's why appreciate. they made bars in the first place. <laughs> the bar to, to hold oh. you up while you're drinking. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> but, so be, be, uh, beyond uh, this wonderful, interesting opening, uh, I think that most people associate on a, on a, a casual basis, uh, drinking is having wine and things like that. Uh, maybe having a scotch or uh, bourbon or something, whatever you have at home. My favorite that I have about once every two years, just because I like to splurge, is a, a gin and tonic. Uh, but you, uh, you, you do believe that there are healthy ways to uh, start and stop uh, uh, drinking of alcoholic beverages and uh, what the benefits might be of moderate uh, uh, drinking. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. It's very individual. Our, for example, when we drink alcohol, there's an enzyme in our stomach called alcohol dehydrogenase that breaks down the alcohol. And this enzyme can be what we call induced. So people who rarely drink, then they will feel more effect because they have less of that enzyme than someone who drinks regularly. I'm glad you mentioned the word moderate because what does that mean? Who defines that? And those definitions do vary. However, the National Institute of Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism does have definitions and their definition is moderate drinking is one drink per day for women or two drinks per day for men. We can come back to that and talk about those differences. And they define heavy drinking as greater than three drinks for women every day or greater than four drinks every day for men. So that I think those definitions can vary, but that's considered sort of a standardized uh, definition of moderate drinking. Is that, is that based basically, though, on uh, body weight, the, the, the general yes. average of body weight and how much the body can yeah. absorb. Exactly. So we've got that enzyme issue that we were, that I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. And then exactly, that's exactly right. Generally speaking, men have uh, larger bodies than women on average and more volume of distribution mm -hmm. of cells that can metabolize the alcohol. Yeah. Now it's interesting because you said, uh, the Institute says one drink for women, two for men is kind of moderate. Um, I find, to, this is just my personal experience, that people who need two shots of whiskey, for instance, mm. uh, every day, I, I find that they're alcoholics. Uh, is that my mm. personal 
analysis of the situation. I'm, I'd also know people who have two shots of whiskey or whatever it is every day and are not alcoholics. But it, it to me, it's the, the borderline of whether you need it, you know, it's a practice yes. or is it a habit? And, and yes. I, I, alcoholism is a big problem. So yes, uh, and that's exactly right. That's right. Also, other factors that we can look at are time of day. If people are needing a drink early in the day, that's not good. Like the, and also I use the word need if they're requiring alcohol to be able to function or flip side, the alcohol is impairing their daily function. That's not good if it's impacting their sleep. And ultimately, too much alcohol does lower our immune system and can make us more prone to illness. In addition to the things that we know too much alcohol can cause, liver damage, et cetera. That's yeah. all. It, it, it does seem to me that the downside of alcohol use, not, not abuse, but just regular alcoholic use, the downside of it is greater than the upside. And I love my alcohol, so. Well, it's interesting what's happened with the pandemic. There's definitely been an increase in alcohol sales. People have less opportunity to go out and have a glass of wine at a restaurant or a bar. And uh, so it's assumed that alcohol consumption has increased. I haven't seen the data quite on that yet, but I think we're going to see that. And so that's, I'm right there with you. It's important to know what role is alcohol playing? Is it just an enjoyable moment that I can have? Or is it something that I crave or something that I actually require and am addicted to? So I think that uh, it's kind of interesting uh, because you mentioned the pandemic that uh, one of the uh, when they when they had lockdowns, particularly here in California, one of the essential services were uh, liquor stores. And I suspect it wasn't because they sold lottery tickets, okay? <laughs> or the occasional package store, which we used to call in the, in the south uh, southeast, one of the service, a package store where you went in and you 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 got your booze in a brown bag. Uh, but uh, so they became an essential service, along with grocery stores and people who were providing medical services. And quite frankly, that and picture frame stores and, and liquor stores, why not picture frame stores? I think that those are kind of important. So uh, it's, it's interesting that they made those essential services. Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? So there are benefits. There are definitely benefits to doing a period of time, especially after overdoing it, mm -hmm. uh, but even not particularly related to a, an occasion of drinking too much, a lot of people, try to do a stretch of time. Uh, people talk about dry January after the winter holidays mm -hmm. and maybe after St. Patrick's Day uh, to do a stretch of time, especially if you're working on your health, it, it can be very beneficial. It can be better for you. It can improve your overall health. It can improve your sleep, which then increases your energy, can improve your immune function. And to our discussion, it can reveal to you, this has definitely been the case for me, when I'm doing like a, a, a detox program where I'm spending a week not having a glass of wine, which was common for me. However, during since the pandemic, I've definitely relaxed at home or on the weekend with opening a bottle of wine, which normally takes us a couple of days to finish. But in any case, it's been very interesting for me to see my relationship with alcohol. How much do I miss it? And uh, certainly to make sure that my body isn't craving it. That, that would not be good. I would just uh, yeah. uh, like to say something uh, uh, in the profound uh, category. Uh, uh, you could stop smoking forever and it won't hurt you. You can stop drinking forever. You may want it, but it won't hurt you. You can't stop yeah. eating forever. That's, That's right. It, it had nothing to do particularly with this conversation, but... You know, I thought it'd be profound, but I like you. You you talked about <laughs> you talked about um, dry month, dry January, and right. literally uh, that would. Uh, I know some people who go without coffee for a month, and they yes. feel a, a lot differently. So anything that has some habitual 
component to it. Uh, maybe yes. uh, getting away from it for some period of time because you can live without it. I don't know. Exactly. Very good. That's, okay. I totally agree. John, say something smarter than that so that we can take this out. <laughs> Uh, I don't have a good finish for that. Well, I, I think I, I would to, end to, with... Yeah, barkeeper, what would he have said about I, all this? Oh, I'm not sure. If he, if, but if he, he's probably talking in an Irish brogue if he was going to say anything at all. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have one final thought, and that is there's a lot of cultures uh, where wine mm -hmm. is uh, usually wine, certainly not uh, a hard alcohol, but where wine is a, a, a regular beverage, you have it with meals. Mm -hmm. And that that harkens back to what you said, Dr. Liz, about the enzymes. Mm -hmm. if, if you are a regular drinker of alcohol, the enzymes are there all the time, help you process it more readily. But people who, um, who drink wine, let's say, as a regular part of meals, they don't, they're not drinking fortified wine. They're not drinking hard alcohol. They're drinking really low alcohol wine. Uh, it, it's not, table wine is not a whole lot more than grape juice. And I think that's important to keep in mind is that um, what you choose to drink, if you choose an alcoholic that's beverage. That's right, that's true. It, it's, there's a great variation in there. Uh, Correct. Although you can certainly have a beer that could be have as much alcohol as a glass of wine but you could also have a, a high proof liquor, you know? Right. So That's there's right. a great variation to discuss. And, and unfortunately, as wonderful as alcohol, as wonderful as alcohol is, and we love it, we love the sauce. We still have to be very careful about it, don't we? We do. So that's, I think that's the closing is, mm -hmm. is enjoy your liquor, enjoy your alcohol, but let's be moderate. And in good health. Thank you, Dr. Liz. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.